think we're off to a good start because I remember to do it with my buttons. Oh, well, that's good because last time you yeah, had it down undone to like about there. <laughs> I didn't notice it until I was editing. Anyway, let's get going. Welcome to the Cabin Boy Knits Woolcast. It's so nice to get so much feedback from all the viewers and the subscribers. And I've noticed that this last week our subscription went past a thousand. So thank you so much for that. And over the last couple of weeks, we've definitely probably we've had probably a hundred new, close to a hundred new subscribers. That many? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I wonder why that is. I mean, <laughs> when did I start? <laughs> probably about two weeks ago. So. Probably just a coincidence, I'm Pro sure. Probably. But for the new viewers who don't know who we are... This is Christopher. And this is the other guy. Jamie. So, welcome. And what is it that we're going to talk about today? We've got a lot to talk about because we have, over the last two weeks, we've had so much going on at the cabin. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk about that. And we've had, there's a project, there's a really cool project that I've been working on. I started it two months ago. Uh, with the Pickering Museum Village, so I want to talk about that. And we've had we've had a bunch of contractors out and about around the house. Um, we're going to talk a bit about the cabin and what's been happening outdoors. And well, uh, just for the American viewers, um, you threw in the out and about part. Oh gosh, <laughs> thanks for pointing that out. And we'll we'll talk about the garden as well. Yes, we will. And one of the. Um, you're going to want to stay tuned because we're going to do that draw of those beautiful red locks from the last episode. That draw is going to come up. Oh yeah, we had so many great uh, comments and also a lot of participants in the indigenous favorite indigenous person and, and why. So we're going to do a raffle for that as well. I think you're going to pick that one. So sit back, grab your favorite drink, and we'll tell you our stories. couple weeks and we've had all kinds of people we've had contractors around and it's also just been a busy time of the year we've got father's day indigenous day and all kinds pride of stuff. events going on yeah a lot of pride events going on as well virtually so, yeah virtual pride yeah but they still managed to have a parade we just got off of a parade in toronto that one so um, it was a little different than some of the past pride parades we've been in i was just thinking though you know we've had lots of i think i've had lots of great Memories of past prides. What's your favorite memory? Well, we met. Sure. Yes, that's a, well. That's a good one. That's that's, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Are there any other memories? Yeah, probably uh, dancing up on stage with a Canadian oh, superstar, my. Patsy Gallant, singing <laughs> "Dancing Queen." But when I sort of took over the show, she sort of. Shuffled me off stage. If you after high kicking, she oh shuffled me off the stage. <laughs> we were right at the. I forgot about that. We were right at the front of the stage, and you were you went up on stage and you were dancing with she her. She called no. She, she called, called me you up. Yes, yeah, yeah stage. for sure. She called you up on stage. You were dancing with her, and then she kicked her leg up, and she wanted me to catch her leg. Oh, that's right. And she's not the same. <laughs> she's gained a little weight since. <laughs> her heyday. So it was pretty heavy when I was holding on to her leg. But you were dancing up storm and everyone was cheering for you. And she, the spotlight wasn't on her anymore. <laughs> so, exactly. So you were I was wearing uh, a very um, intriguing outfit. Yes. Yeah. yeah if yes. I find a picture, I'll put it, I'll put it on. Maybe not. Thank <laughs> or maybe, you. Or maybe. <laughs> and then we met Trudeau uh, before he became Prime Minister. Yes, this is true. I was wearing that outfit. Yes. He commented on the color that he really liked the blue on me. Right. And that outfit meaning the one that with the Patsy Galant outfit. Yes. Yeah, so I'll definitely have to find that and share it with everybody. And I remember um, he had there was no one around him. He was on Church Street and there was no one around him. I couldn't believe it. So we went up and had a chat with him. And a photo. And a photo. And do you remember what he said to him? 
<laughs> yeah, you were talking all political and, and you know, his platform and this and that other about politics. And I said, and I just said, does this outfit make me look gay? <laughs> and then that's where he commented he, he burst on my, my yes. and he commented on my outfit in a nice way. Yeah. He liked it. And then you met him a couple of years later. Yes, I did. Yeah. And this this time it made it made news everywhere. All over the world. Um, I, I was interviewed by... Um, Global TV, so I did make a statement. He gave me a great big like, full contact body hug. And uh, there, you could just Google it. You could Google it, and Trudeau, he'll come out proud and you'll see me. You don't have to Google it. I'm going to put a link to it. <laughs> and the other thing is, with that outfit, his wife also had a few words with me, and she's like, What about me? And she came over and gave me a great big hug. I spoke to her in French, um, and she said, I want that outfit when you're done with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's still in my mind to package it up and send it off to her. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, so this, I mean, it's definitely been different this year, but there are a lot of great, great moments uh, with Pride. So, yes. Yeah. So, so this week, my gosh, it's been so busy. We had contractors here. You mentioned that, yes. We yeah. Had, uh, well, we had the tree people. Yeah. But that was the, I mean, that was the big one. That was the big event. We have this huge, beautiful, beautiful blue spruce tree. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it's right outside the front door, but it's so close to the house. It's, 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 it's very close to the house. And it's too close. And it's basically a ladder for squirrels to walk up and hop into our attic. So, um, and it was sick, so we needed to, to deal with it. Exactly. And it's unfortunate. Well, it is because you've, you've dyed wool from snip, snippings from that tree, but now... As it went down, you, you chopped away a bunch and they'll be doing some more spruce yeah. dyeing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's funny because um, I always plan out what I'm going to dye over the next couple of weeks and then I get thrown a curveball, but it's always nice. Like this, I hadn't planned on cutting or dyeing with blue spruce, but then when it was there and it came down, and I can't believe how quickly it came down, it was just a matter of minutes. Yes. Uh, and it just came down. And so, but we salvaged, um, you told them to save some of it for me. So if there's a lot of the blue ends, so, so the new piece, um, parts of the tree, the blue spruce uh, tips that I'll be dying. And that's the ones that you really want as well. So I'm excited about that. So I'll be doing that. Yes. And then you came back, you came home with the dog after the dog got his hair cut and you had two bags with you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's right. Because um, yes, Joanne from the Groomer in Sterling. Thank you so much because she came back with the um, a huge bag of chamomile, chamomile, yeah. chamomile, and also a big bag of mint. Yeah. And so you're going to be dying some wool, and you have been dying wool with the chamomile. Yeah, I, I definitely um, did that, and it's I use. You know, there's a bunch of different uh, recipes, and some of them just use the heads of the chamomile, and others use the whole thing. I found, I, I did both, and I found that using the whole thing um, gave me a color that I was more interested in. It was a greeny-yellow color. It was, it was quite nice. So and, I just and I just so happened to pick up some strawberries, because I'm still working with the rhubarb that we chatted about the last time, and yeah. there's still some out there, so I wanted to start some jams, so I did, Jamie Jam, but... <clears throat> what I did was I added mint to the recipe, so I added mint with the rhubarb and strawberry, and it's absolutely delicious. It's really good. It's really it's good. It's really good. Yeah. Are you sharing your recipe? Uh, well, it's again, I just, I did a combination recipe because some of it called for, most recipes, they call for the pectin, and it's just, it's just to, it's just to thicken it, and I, I don't believe in doing that. You just have to add the sugar, and you just, um, you know, you bring it to a boil, and it, it just, it, it, it's coagulates and forms forms into a jam without having to add anything else other right. than just the fruit and the sugar. We can put the we can put the footnote yeah, we can put the recipe on the footnotes. We or, could. or is it secret? No, it's not secret. I okay. would gladly share it because Good. I I thought I was thinking out loud when I thought, hmm, mint, but maybe that would be there are all kinds of rhubarb, strawberry, or strawberry mint, and everything with mint jams on the market. But I thought I, think I, I thought it was my before. I thought it was my idea, <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. It's very good. Anyway, it was great. So, so we did that, and so the reason I brought that up right away is because um, 
I hadn't planned on dying with chamomile either, but the chamomile, fresh chamomile was there, so I wanted to die with it right away. So I've been a little off track. And then the foxgloves. The foxgloves, I would planned on dying those this week, um, but I was dying the other stuff. So this stuff is probably going to be dyed this afternoon. There's a, a bunch of it, and it's ready to be picked in the garden. And it actually looks like somebody slept on it. I don't think the deer slept on it. It would be worse than that. But it was, or the dog. But it was, I think the rain just flattened it. And they get pretty heavy on top. So uh, anyway, I'm looking well, forward to that. Well, that reminds me, slept, the deer slept on it, you mentioned. But um, just getting back to the chamomile, because the chamomile tea I love, because it really does put you to sleep. And you it can smells just, too. And, well, that's the thing. He has it brewing on the stove. I'm upstairs, <laughs> and I didn't drink any, but just... Just the, it was just wafting through the air, and I just dozed off. <laughs> and I think it has to do that. So the whole house just this chamomile. That was my game plan, so that I could have the rest of the house to myself and watch what yourself. I want to see on the TV. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, I, I really love the smell of chamomile. It reminds me of when I was a kid at my grandmother's, uh, because my cousin always had was would always brew chamomile tea as well. So it was it, it's a nice memory. So I love that. I love that. And wildlife. Wildlife. Yeah, we did see, we saw a few uh, very, um, well, rare-ish, um, uh, yeah, a few, it was, a few critters. Well, it was the day, it had just rained, and so every day we go for, take the dog for a walk in the morning, every day, but we didn't do it this morning, but pretty much every day. Not every day, but we try. And, and so we get out, and it's this uh, road that's been uh, unassumed, so it's not paved or anything, and it goes through a uh, wetlands area, it's really nice. And, and cars don't really use it and so and it's it's overgrown and everything and it had just rained the night before and so it was very humid and everything was still wet and there were a ton of snakes we saw all kinds of snakes around and the snakes around here aren't poisonous um we don't have any rattler snakes rattlesnakes around here uh, and most of them are garter snakes um, however we did see a eastern ribbon snake and they're um, they're not in the endangered species list but they're they're on the watch list right yes. now and so it was quite exciting to see that and they're fast he moved so quickly yes. across the the path i couldn't believe it and when you read about it it, it says that they're rare to see yes yeah um, it has the, and it has the yellow the yellow ribbon in it that's why yeah. it looks so different than the others it was very different and then a slight just under the eyes it's got a little crest yes and um, then there was crescent. that and then there was that red bird that caught our eye scarlet tanger yes and that, that that's what it was it was gorgeous it was a male it was a male one and it was so it it looked like something that didn't belong in a in a in the scene because it was just yes. so bright and it was still a little overcast that day a lot of the trees are dead in the marshy area and it was this bright bright red color it was gorgeous it actually looked like if someone were painting and they just did it in black and white, and then they added the bird in it. Exactly. It was so cool. Yeah, with the black wings. So there was the contrast with this scarlet, scarlet, like a red poppy, red color, yeah. with the black wings, and it just stood out. We, we watched it for a while because everywhere it moved to, you couldn't miss it. And that, as well, is a rare sighting in this any time and in this area. Yeah. And it's not a wetland bird. No, no, but it, you find it find you can find them in the oak forests, and we live in the oak forests. This is true, but it was in the swampland, yeah, marshy area. Yeah, and there and those are not too many people see those birds. So we were really lucky that day. Yes, um, but back to the snakes, just for for one oh. one one more point. Okay. <laughs> what did I do now? You pointed it what out. What did I do? In the backyard. So looking at a window in our house, um, you pointed it out. But it was basically uh, the skin of a snake. So he was um, shedding the skin, and it's hanging out of the window, our downstairs window. Yes. But on the outside. And so I haven't seen that snake before. Uh, I know you don't like talking about it. <laughs> but I know... It's probably in the basement, because <laughs> as it entered, as it entered, it shed its skin, and it was dangling from... Well, I can tell you it probably window. is in the basement. I haven't seen it outside. I usually see it. It usually likes to sun itself just out by the patio, and I haven't seen it lately. Uh, but I will tell you, when we f the first year we moved in here, there was a snake skin, and it was probably around that long. And it was, I don't know if I told you or not, and it was underneath the stairs. And so I figured that they were in there. But I, I just think about it as, you know, you're in the country. There's going to be mice and stuff around. And so you've got this snake that just helps take care of the, 
take care of the rodents in the in the house if there sure. are any. So, so and they're not they're harmless. Mm -hmm. So, but I can imagine they'd be a little startling to yeah. if if you woke up one day and saw one. <laughs> well, absolutely. So, uh, and now what about the gardens? I know that you're quite excited about well what's going on in the garden. Well, you've taken a lot of time to to pluck away at the. Um, all of the weeds in your in your garden. I call that his garden. And yeah, so yeah, all the daisies are gone. Um, all the weeds are pretty much gone. And I was able to find um, blue indigo and the foxgloves. Yes. And, the, and I've got um, coneflowers in there as well. Yeah. The, so, the indigo was a, a, a sweet surprise. Well, I forgot that I planted it last year. <laughs> I didn't even know you <laughs> planted it. It's like what's that blue thing? Oh, indigo. Wow. And yeah. the other thing we discovered in the in the front. In the gardens here, in the in the in the beds, um, as I mentioned before, things just pop up. And so, what do you think's popped up on its own? Which I didn't know that happened. I thought you had to specifically plant, but we got marijuana growing. <laughs> now, we had some last year because you died with it, and that yeah. was the purpose of it. Yeah, um, it's legal here. You're allowed how many plants? Do you have four, about? four per four person. Per, but there's there are several now growing out there. They self seeded. So I thought that is well, there's no mistake in marijuana. So they've self seeded where they were planted in the bed. So there's uh, there are three or four there growing, and so we, we left them. And I think oh you do have the marijuana. I do. Skin. Yeah. So and I basically use the the leaves of it, and I love the color. The color's fantastic. And I first found out about this. I didn't know you could do this until I was in Rhinebeck. Um, the first time I was in Rhinebeck and I saw someone dying with um, marijuana leaves. And so uh, I thought that was a great idea. I was too nervous to buy her yarn and bring it back across the border because yes, it wasn't legal right. at that time. That's right. So, but anyway, the color is really good. This, this one is actually logwood along with um, marijuana. Yeah. And the story behind this is, if you remember correctly, he knitted a hat for his the 420 son. Hat. Yeah. The 420 hat for his son. And his daughter was like, oh, dad, Stephen's not going to want it. That's probably, he's never going to wear that. I said, you know what? It's, it's a nice color. It's a very masculine color. It's a nice color. And I said, you know what? If he doesn't like the hat, he can always just smoke it. <laughs> 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 Great parenting. <laughs> he's a very, he did like it. He's a very good make his own so. decisions. <laughs> Hopefully not. I am not pushing that idea on anybody. But it was just the humor in it, I thought. So you, and what else do you have in the garden? What else is in the garden? Oh, the sunflowers are exploding. I'm so excited. I, yeah. I mentioned planting them from seed. And, you know, when I first saw these two tiny little leaves coming out and, you know, half a shell still on, on the leaves. Um, now, they're just like, each day, they're just boom, 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 like yeah. six inches at a time. They're just exploding. That's fantastic. I'm very excited to share some future photos of them if they do indeed grow to be eight ten feet tall along the side of the cabin it's gonna look amazing yeah it's gonna look fantastic and i can't believe how much they grow every day they just it's incredible yeah. yes so it's exciting every morning you go out and you see that it's growing a little more and a little more the challenge is going to be keeping the dog out of the that piece of the garden or the deer i hope they don't oh yeah start you know find those i don't think they've come that close to, i mean they're right against the cabin they've not never come that close to the cabin Maybe with a <laughs> pretty feet. close though. Well, yeah, you're right. Uh, they did eat the hostas in the front garden, right at the. Well, yeah, right it's either that or the rabbits. So I don't know. Well, if it were the rabbits, I think they'd be all gone. I think they came and had the deer came and had a munch, and that's that's mm -hmm. all that's happened. They definitely eat your rose rose bushes. Oh gosh, yes. I tried to grow roses. Three years in a row, I've planted new rose bushes along the side of the path, coming up to the door. And uh, yeah, the deer just love them. And so we did have a couple of big, beautiful red roses, but they were like one here, one there, died off. I've given up on the roses. No, the rosebuds are gone, pretty much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to, can we talk about the project? I'm really excited about that. Oh, the project. Or did you have anything else to talk about? Yeah, with the cabin. Okay, the project. The project, so I, I was, uh, I had someone reach out to me, Carrie, from the Pickering Museum Village a couple months ago, and he wanted to talk about a project. And so, I'm, before I get into the details of the project, um, I think it's important to set the context, because this project relates to the village. They basically want, are very interested in this piece 
that, uh, that um, constitutes the, the project. But in order to give you a better understanding of it all, I think we should talk about the history of where this led us, where this project led us. Because it led us down a rabbit hole to find out, okay, you know, what time, of, when was this? When did this take place in history? And you know, what type of dyes were used during this time? And so I, I was really excited because I use, most of the techniques I use are um, from ancestors, you know, from indigenous peoples. So those are the types of things that I like to use. So this was a really exciting project for me. But let's go back in time and where does this project lead us? Where does it lead us from? It leads us, I think, all the way to New Brunswick. And? To the fortress. Of? Lewisburg. <laughs> I, see, Lewisburg, this is what I, I, I needed to hear because, let me just clarify something from the get-go. Why did I feel like I stepped in a trap? <laughs> <laughs> because I thought you were going to talk about Lewisburg. Now, it's a French fortress and it's actually, I mean, it's Louis, Louisbourg, it's French, so you don't pronounce the S is silent and the G is silent. And Louis, because King Louis the Fourteenth of France. You mean King Louis? King Louis. <laughs> everybody knows it's always a king. King Louis the Fourteenth, yes, Fifteenth, right. Sixteenth, King Louis of France. So Louisbourg and a bourg is is basically a town. You, if you think like a Latin quarter, or a French quarter, or just a, a small town, Louisbourg. So, so the fortress of Louisbourg. Now this. Um, let's just start in the eighteenth century. Louisbourg um, was inhabited by, well, no, let's go back. In the 18th century, there was constantly um, a battle for supremacy or control of territories in the New World between the French and the English. Yes. So in 1713, the British had conquered or taken over control of a lot of the French, um, new French colonies within Newfoundland and Acadia, which is now Nova Scotia, on the east coast of Canada. So that same year, in 1713, the French decided to uh, settle in, in an island off the coast in the Gulf of St. Lawrence, which they named Ile Royale, which is the Royal Island, again after the king. It's known today as Cape Breton Island. So Louisbourg was founded. And then they decided that because of its very strategic location at the entrance to the St. Lawrence River and the Gulf of the St. Lawrence, uh, which leads towards Quebec City and Montreal, very established, you know, 100 years possibly prior, established um, French territories there. Mm -hmm. So they decided to build uh, this fortress. So the fortress um, was built beginning in... 1719 and it took 24 years to build now they it was huge too it was very it was a, a massive it was a very massive project one of the largest in all of north america very expensive and very important and strategic so it was designed by king louis the 14th's chief engineer so the walls for this fortress were uh 36 feet thick could you imagine? And 30 feet high, uh, high above a very deep ditch. It was surrounded on three sides by the sea. So it then became um, a very important port of trade. So between the 1740s to 1750, it doubled in, um, in population. So it went from roughly around 2,000, which included several hundred soldiers yeah. from 2,000 to 4,000 settlers and some of those new settlers they came they came from some of them from the, the new colonies the new France um, territories within Canada and then some again from France so it was very very uh, productive and very valuable uh, because of the cod fisheries and um, it was it was so um, I would say it was, it was so successful that they had trading ships coming in, of course, from France, the Caribbean, from the British yeah. American colonies south of us, and of course locally from Quebec and Montreal would come in. So all in all, very successful um, village within the fortification. But then the British 
knowing that there is money to be made, there's money to be had here in its strategic location, they then invaded and attacked and besieged, as they do in these situations, the fortress in 1745. So it didn't take long before they surrendered because as, you know, siege, they run out of food, ammunition, they surrender. The British now have control of the fort. Now, so can I just jump in for a second? Sure. <laughs> I was going to say. So you, sure. you, you mentioned that it was three sides. So they had the fortress around all the sides. And didn't, it wasn't one of the issues that they spent so much time on the three sides that were facing the water. They didn't really pay much attention to the <laughs> land side. This comes, this is oh, coming up soon, you see. This is what happened, let me tell you. This is my, I, used to get in, I used to get in trouble in school all the time for jumping fur, there. Fur, <laughs> but, okay, no. So, where was I? So what happened was, so we're at 1745, the British have control of the fortress. Now, these, these ongoing conflicts are continuing. So with the ongoing conflicts, it's, at one point, they... Uh, renegotiated with the French and handed back the fortress of Louisbourg um, to the French three years later in 1748. And now for the next 10 years, it just, it just was French, it produced, it was successful, it was um, making a lot of money, it kept growing. So what happens next, 1758, the British decide that, hmm, they're going to once again attack and invade. But this time, they did it differently. As Christopher mentioned, the back of the fortress was hundreds of, I would say hundreds of feet of impregnable marshlands. Yeah. So they never worried about that because they thought nobody's coming from there. But they were able to bring in some smaller boats within a distance. They traveled through these, this marshland and made their way, led by General Wolfe, and he's a very important figure in Canadian history altogether. So they did, um, they did conquer. The French surrendered rather quickly this time around. And, um, and this time as well, the British decided never again did they want this fortress to be any sort of threat in the future. So it was completely destroyed, unfortunately. And what happened next, as I mentioned, Wolf in history is uh, very important because the following year, now they were open the gateway to the St. Lawrence and to the strategic mm -hmm. and very prominent French settlements of Quebec City and Montreal were then attacked and invaded. And the very infamous battle on the Plains of Abraham outside of the Quebec City walls Named so because of Abraham Martin, it was his farm, his large farm field up high on the escarpment overlooking the St. Lawrence. Um, both generals, General Wolfe, died within minutes into battle. He was shot three times, died on the, on the battlefield. Montcalm was wounded in the ribs. He died the next morning, and the battle ended, and the British were the conquerors. So this was then the, the last two chain course of French Canadian history. And the following year, the French did try to take over Quebec City once again, failed. And in 1763, the Paris, uh, the Treaty of Paris was signed forever, just giving it all to the British to then rule for days on and into today, pretty much. Yeah. So you've... And then the last... Uh, yeah, no, no, you go ahead. Well, the last thing I was going to mention was, so that brings us to recent history, which in 1928, um, the fortress of Louisbourg was a designated national historic site. And so a lot of archaeological digs and so forth continued until um, 1959, 60, 61, when Parks Canada decided to take on the um, reconstruction of the one of the largest projects in Canadian history to rebuild Louisbourg, which brings us to today and to why you brought up 
Yeah, and, and, I, and I guess just to add to that story, like Diefenbaker, the Prime Minister at the time, was the one who said to go ahead with this because he wanted really to embrace, you know, we need to embrace our, or understand our, our history, which is fantastic. And they basically commissioned a lot of coal miners to come in and, and help with the renovation, or renovation, the excavation. Very special <laughs> renovation, fancy <laughs> renovation. And so they came in, and uh, that leads us to where we are with the project. This so, is true. Yeah, so Pickering, so the Pickering Museum Village um, individual, Carrie, uh, reached out to me and said, you know, would you be interested in providing yarn for us? Because we are interested in making the latrine hat. I thought the latrine hat, I've heard of the latrine hat before, but I can't put my finger on it. And so that led me down to figure out what it was, and Carrie provided me with some great documents on, on the latrine hat and, and the pattern. Um, and said, would you be interested in, in doing that? So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna take this on. I'd, I'd love to do it. So I said, yes. Um, and I wanted to find the the, um, the right, I wanted to be able to to recreate the hat if I, if I could. And so what the latrine hat is actually, is a hat that was found during excavation. It was found in 15, 1959, over just over 200 years uh, of when when it was believed to have been dropped in the latrine, so and the latrine, the latrine, and so the latrine is basically it was in the hospital that they had created in Louisbourg, <laughs> Louisbourg, Louisbourg, and, um, and so they found it in there, and when they were excavating, and it's interesting because when you look at artifacts, you don't really see fabric in a, in a lot of artifacts because um, they break down over time, but because this was in a latrine in a toilet, um, the organic matter around it helped preserve it. So they they uncovered it, and, um, and 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 they were able to look at it and put a date on it, a close enough date. Um, so they, they figured it was probably um, 200 years earlier that it, around 200 years earlier that it, that it fell in. Um, and so, Obviously, that poor soul, he didn't retrieve his hat from the latrine. <laughs> it stayed there forever and ever until discovered in 1959. Yeah. Yeah. After they excavated this uh, and pulled out the, the hat out of the latrine, they had a, they had a couple of people um, who were able to uh, look at it, analyze it, and they had a resident expert, actually, uh, Barbara Kelly Landry, who works, has been... Uh, Spinner for, for a long time, great prolific knitter. They called her in to, to look at it, analyze it. So she got to look at it and figure out um, how it was knit. And um, she basically recreated a pattern for it. And so she published the pattern, and I'll talk about that in a second. But I want to talk about the yarn that I used. So I was thinking, you know, what kind of yarn should I use? What kind of dye should I use? And this is before I started doing a lot of my research. And so I figured on, I, I wanted it to be Canadian yarn, and during that period of time, they probably would have had Cheviot sheep or Cheviot-like sheep, and so I didn't get my hands on any Cheviot wool, but I did get something comparable. Um, but the other factor that I had in was, I thought, you know, if, if there's a group of people that are gonna be wearing it, I'd like it to be a little more comfortable than um, it probably would have been back then. So I happened upon, um, during my search, some yarn, that I thought would, would, would work. And it was consistent, I guess, with the pattern that Barbara had put together as well. And so then I started dyeing the yarn. And this is goldenrod. And I had white spruce. And I used blue spruce. And I also used um, walnut, black walnut as well. So I got all these together and then um, Carrie came by and picked them up and took them back. So I haven't seen the output yet of, of the hat that they put together, but I'm really looking forward to it. And so what is the purpose of the hat? The purpose of the hat is, well, I'll show you the hat, and we'll talk about that, and okay. we'll talk about the purpose of it as well. I, I did a couple of hats, and so this is it. Very good. And I made some changes to it. If you, When you look on the pattern, and I'll put a link to the pattern, you'll notice that it's one color. And when I first did it, it was one color. But I like to have, I, I thought this would, this would be interesting to make it pop or just to have a contrast in the hat. So I used two different wools. I also, upon my research, I found out that um, it was an undyed hat. So it was hand spun and it was two ply. 
and uh, it was undyed. So dyeing gives just a, just a little bit more color, and but I, I thought what I would do is I would use a different wool on this one and um, use it undyed. So I'm happy with the results. So, uh, so I didn't answer your question though. Mm -hmm. Your original question was, um, you know, who used it? And so these hats were used primarily by laborers. And so the reason that they got this rim around is so it kept your ears warm and it felt secure to your head uh, because it was really windy uh, around there as well. So you would, the laborers mainly wore this hat. So I'm not going to ask you to wear it because I don't want to wreck your hair. But um, I, I, I Thank I you. <laughs> and then what about but the project in the museum? What are they doing with the hat? They're going to knit them up. And oh. yeah, I forgot okay. some of the details. So they're going to knit it up. And I think they're going to wear them at the museum. But the museum's... I think it was open last weekend for drive-throughs, just to drive around. But I don't know if it's open. It's going to be open this summer or not. It will definitely be open next summer for sure. And we've been invited to go um, to to see the museum, so I'm really excited about that. And hopefully, we'll see people with this hat. I'm going to bring this hat when we go. Yeah. So, and you'll have to wear a hat too. Well, you have your other one. I have the other one as well. Yeah. That's right. So this was a really fun project because it took us down a rabbit hole of you know really getting um, like. Understanding. Oh, really, a latrine, really a latrine hole. A latrine hole. It took us down a latrine <laughs> hole. It, it smelled nicer like, than, than the latrine hole smell. And, but it gave us a piece of history that I didn't know. So I was yeah. really excited about this. It's, no, and I, I love history. I, well, I could go on and on with Canadian history. Um, and that's because, I mean, I did take grade 13 as a choice. They didn't have grade 13 anymore. In the day when they had grade 13, <laughs> not too long ago, I did take... Um, French Canadian history, yeah, and so I know a bit about that, and I love a history all around. Anything historical, um, I love. When we travel, it's always about the museums, the history of everything, and anywhere we go, I love it. Yeah, and I just want to do a special thank you to the Pickering Museum Village and and Carrie for reaching out. Thanks a lot. This brought a lot of joy, and um, I really really love the project. So thank you. And I think it's it's it's. It's almost it's it's very much an honor to be part of a of a, a, a historical society, a historical museum that will have and carry this hat, and they will also have you know the yarn you used and the details of the in dyeing in the way they did would have back then. Yeah. And I think that that's quite quite an honor. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, it's great. Thank you. So, what are we going to talk about next? Mail. What did you get in the mail? He gets all How's the mail, prompt as I said before. Christopher gets mail. No, you get bills. <laughs> I was going to say, but yeah, mail. Okay. We don't, we don't do enough mailing in the old days. I always used to write letters to my, my friends on a regular basis out, out in Vancouver, my, my sisters out there, good friends. Um, I always used to write letters. I still do the odd time, like cards. Well, cards, of course. but. Whoever writes cards are so expensive. So you could spend ten dollars on a card now; they're really expensive. Well, but I think email is just so much uh, more efficient. I think that's why everybody's. This is true. But it's nice to get a card. And email. recently, I've, I've, we've made our own cards recently yeah. in the last few months because we didn't go out to a store and buy cards. Yeah. So we, we've made a few cards, a few Easter cards. You have especially. Cards. Yeah. So, you've, yeah. You've been drawing, doing some drawings of the uh, cabin. Yeah. And and. Um, making those as cards, which have been nice. Yeah. So you've got so, mail. I've got mail. So I am going to... It's actually something to wear. Oh. So even better. Oh, something And I'm wear. really excited about this because it's functional. It's really functional. And I will be wearing it when I'm doing most of my dyeing. So I'll be even more excited when I get mail. <laughs> so Send I'm going to... something. I'm going to put it on now. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Notice anything different? <laughs> different than. <laughs> so this is it. That's awesome. I, would, I can't. What is? Trust the process. What does yeah. it all mean? What does it all mean? <laughs> and this is from uh, designs by Yasmin. Okay. So she has 
she has a store, online store, and um, she sells, well, you know what she sells, but for those of you who don't, she, check out her website, it's fantastic, and she sells crochet earrings, and they're, and they're really nice. I don't have pierced ears, you don't have pierced ears, um, we love Yasmin, so uh, I wanted to do something to, su to support her business, and this was fantastic. I saw the apron on, I was really, really excited about that, so I'll be using that for my dyeing. Exactly. You can yeah. carry some of your, your equipment and tools in I can. here. Yep. You won't get your pretty shirts all spotted with color. I know. It's very functional. It is functional. And it's nice. And I like the earthy tone of it. The, it's very like a natural earth tone. What I like about it too is it keeps the dyes off of my skin. So. <laughs> oh wait. I forgot it doesn't wear shirts underneath. So anyway, that's it. I'm really excited about it. So thank you Yasmin for that. That's it's great. I'm back. He's back. Am I all buttoned up? Yes, you're good. Yeah. So, um, not only did you get mail, he also got company. Oh, right. Yes. Uh, yes. Sophie from Delfina Collective popped in. She has just started a web series. And yes. so, I think that she's doing two things. She's going to be doing a series of interviews with people, and then she's uh, partnering with Linda. Linda likes photos, um, and they're going to have a their own show as well. This uh, interview is structured like Vogue, the 75 questions in Vogue. Mm -hmm. And so, but rather than following us around the cabin, um, she just sat with me outside and yes. asked me a bunch of questions. I, and I could see she'd be really good at that. Oh yeah, she was, so she was great. In the personality, I could, I could see her doing really well with this. Yeah, and she asked me everything, like all kinds of different questions. I'm glad it wasn't me, because <laughs> she didn't want to interview me. Yeah, but we'll wait till you hear some of the answers. <laughs> Uh, everything from favorite food to dinner party guests and all kinds of stuff. So uh, it was it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So when when and when and where are we going to be able to see this? She has just dropped it, and so it's on. Dropped it. What's it's, that mean? it's on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she got to start over now. What? I don't yeah. Get it. <laughs> she just it just dropped on YouTube last night. So oh. so she has new new channel. So check that out. Um, it should be a lot of fun. And I like the. I, I thought I watched the interview last night. Oh, um, I didn't. So yeah, you were sleeping. What? It was all the chamomile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. You knocked me out with the chamomile. <laughs> yeah. So you better check the house. There might be some more chamomile in some of the comments. Oh my gosh. But um, yeah. So it's it's on YouTube. I'll put a link to that as well. And she interviewed Christy Glass. I think is her next guest. Oh, very. Yeah. A lot of there's going to be a lot of Quebec content as well. Oh, that's um, good. So I know that she's got a, a slew of um, very good of Quebec. Uh, and there's so many uh, fantastic designers and dyers and knitters out of out of Quebec. So. En français, s'il vous plaît. Oui. <laughs> exactly. So that should be fun. That should be that should be great. Yeah. So thank you for mentioning that. That's that's terrific. You're welcome. So what have I been putting in my dye pot this week? Oh, what have you been putting in your other than a lot? What knocked me out? I a lot. I've had a a lot of dye pots going. Um, at night, so I think that's why you were knocked out uh, mm. with the chamomile. But aside from the chamomile, I had a bunch of stuff going on. Um, and I hope you can see this. I hope this comes out. I've got some photos of it as well. That oh, I'll... yes. Let's see. Sure. <laughs> I always forget to hand you I know. I'm are. not here. <laughs> I have to rip it out of your hands. And so, and this one I used um, mugwort and dandelion and matter root? Uh, matter root I see red yeah not in a bad way and indigo and so it was great and again yeah, I mentioned this in the last episode so I've got separate dye pots going and uh, you have to be really careful not to damage the wool when you're doing that but it was it was a lot of fun I love the colors and so I, this is one I'm going to replicate many times over because I I, I like this. Yeah, this is very much like the other pro process you talked about, but this is still quite different than the others. I mean, the whole combination is is a little darker, and uh, it's almost, uh, yeah, very earthy and autumn-like. Yeah. Like fall season colors almost. Very yeah. different from the last batch you did multicolored. Yeah, and it's funny because it, intuitively, I would not have mixed those colors together. Um, but it was just I, I wanted to just to see what it was going to come out and look, what it was going to look like. Well, and you, you also you posted 
this on what Instagram? You yeah. posted a photo of it, and you got a lot of really good feedback, which you said you were surprised. But I'm not because it's 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 beautiful. I never know how people are going to react to to certain to certain skeins of yarn. So um, so anyway, it was it was yeah. it was great. So I, I and really enjoyed doing that. And on on deck, I've got um, the fox gloves are going to be this afternoon, and we have to let's say we um, get ready for the. Uh, blue spruce. By, I, we, I, by we, he means get to the garden, start snipping and loading <laughs> up that dive that's stuff to bring to the kitchen, and then get in the kitchen and get things help get things ready for you. Well, you forgot washing the wool. Oh, wash and oh yeah, washing and rinsing and yeah. pre-mortising the wool, getting the wool more to help. lots, lots. So, to th do. No, there's always no, tons there's to, to do. Yeah, there's a lot to do. And so it's a it's a it's a process. Yeah, yeah, and and so I've been debating whether or not to do the. Um, purple fetch that's uh, fetch. everywhere it's all over the place and fetch. there's crown fetch and um, purple and so we've got that everywhere and so I probably will do the purple as well and see now is that um, is the fetch by accident or is that planted well it depends that's a good question it depends on who you're who who you're talking to um, it's normally it was been brought over to Canada and it's used to hold, uh, keep um, embankments together basically because oh. of the root system that oh, they have. That it goes in and yes. um, purple vetch. And, and it goes in and um, the root system just, it's its good and bad. It's great because if we have, you know the walls that we have on the driveway yes, coming down? Yes, it's all along the driveway. Because the driveway is about a hundred meters or maybe even longer than Which that. Which is how many, what, how many feet is that? <laughs> It's a lot of feet. It's long. We if it wasn't in the seventies. We converted to the metric system. I don't remember that far uh, back. I was a baby. And so, anyway, it's it's so it's it's. I'm not upset with it being on our driveway because it's holding the driveway together. It's like a couple of hundred feet. It's because, very long. Yeah, and we've also got a significant drop off yes. of the driveway. If you if you go no, off over the corner, not, if you go off there. the edges of it, though, you're in the basically in the wetlands or in the in that area and so down into um, the woods so i think that i'm happy that it's there but not in my garden so yes i've been pulling that out but again it's it's because of the root system it's once it gets in your garden it's it's tough to get out so i'll be um rather than just pulling it and getting rid of it why don't i use it and may as well make usage of it yeah and i i have actually found a few uh, recipes in um, recipes my plant dying book oh it's in there yeah yeah. Oh, okay. Some Very of my good. books. Yep. So that, I'm looking forward to that. So that's going to be my dye pots for the next, at least the next couple of weeks. And then the flowers that pop up, we'll see what pops up. I know the daffodils are up. Uh, we'll, we'll see. There's, there's always um, something to dye with. Yeah. So excellent. I think it is time now for, for our raffle. That's right. The raffle. Yeah. What are we raffling again? We are raffling your your wig. And what's the reminder? Remind remind all of our friends what this is about. This was uh, okay. It was really exciting to have this contest for me. I thought this was an act of giving, and so. Um, but really, the feedback that you gave us uh, it was it was fantastic in terms of. Uh, the individuals that you selected as your favorite Indigenous person and the reason, or the rationale, or the reasons why, um, I got so much out of it. And um, yeah, some fa I mean, fascinating personalities and characters that we've never other otherwise some never even heard of. Yeah, um, and it's all within your own region or your own memories or, or special to all of you. And so, and I love I love history. So reading and hearing about them is fantastic. And so what I thought I would do is I'll put a link beside each of the names that were given um, where where I can. And so you can click on them and find out the history uh, about them as well. But I found it fascinating. So it was I was really, really happy. It was, it was terrific. Yes. So, so what, we're going to draw. What is this again? Now, this is the, is it BFL? Yes. It is. Yep. So this wonderful red, reddish BFL and this. Are you going to talk about what's dyed with? Well, I forget. I think it's Brazil wood. 
Yeah, I think you're right. It's precise. And I was pretty, <laughs> I <laughs> yeah, was your hair. <laughs> I was pretending I could read it, but I don't have my glasses on, so I'm trying to go by memory. But I do recall it being, I used to, never mind. Oh, I thought it wasn't you. No, not I. <laughs> and uh, the wonderful Captain Boynet's bag. Yeah. So, are we going to go on with the draw? Yes, so you are going to do the honors. Mm -hmm. And I would grab your glasses. If so, I I'm going to... I'm not going to wear those glasses unless I absolutely need them. So, as you mentioned, we had quite a few responses in here. So, why don't you go ahead and do the honors, and, okay. I'll, and, I'll, attempt to, <laughs> and I'll attempt to read it. Cause, <laughs> cause, oh, that's not, here we go. Is there an, oh, there isn't a name, though. So we have the, not everyone put their full name on it, which is absolutely fine. Uh, we've got your, te, your name, uh, your YouTube name. And so... Um, I, can't, I can't, is that a name? Is it, um, I think it's uh, Mijeju, Mijeju. Mijeju, and it's Tecumseh. And you selected Tecumseh. So, which is which is a, a great selection. So uh, that's fantastic. So I would encourage you to. I'll put my email address on the um, notes, and then you can send me uh, an email with with your address, and I'll ship it off to you. So congratulations! Congratulations for that. I'm definitely going to be doing more of these because uh, I really, again, I, I enjoyed learning um, and expanding my knowledge in terms of uh, Indigenous people. The, that you um, enjoy, and so it was. It was terrific. Yeah. So thank you. And and once uh, once you're in touch, we'll package this and send it off to you. Yep. Correct. Yeah. Fantastic. Very good. So what do we have coming uh, coming up? Coming up. What do we have coming up? We you have, have more coming up than I do. Canada Day. That's right. Canada Day, July first, followed by the fourth of July. Yes. Yes. Followed by the fourth of July. And I've got a, an interview coming up in July, and it's I'll put details on the. Um, I think we'll be doing another. We'll definitely be doing another cast before then, so I can talk about it in detail in the next one. In the next episode. I don't episode. think so. That's just in a few days. No, it's mid. It's mid July. It's the, oh, I the interview's about mid Canada July, Day. and it's oh, with, it's about your interview. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And then we hope to have the website, the not the website, the the store open. <laughs> yes. So we're I would say last the last time we did an episode, we were eighty percent there. I think we're pretty. We've got pretty much all the content, photos, and um, written um, done. The text. The, the text, text is, is done. The text is just about done. So we just have to plot it in the right areas and um, and then pull the trigger. So I'm I'm thinking we're probably three weeks away. Do you think? I don't know. And then I guess the other thing I wanted to mention was that uh, a yarn shop contacted me and asked if they would carry my yarn. Um, and so I've got it in um, in Korshenko, in Verdun. In Montreal. Yep. And so the next place is going to be Rosehaven Yarn Shop in Picton. So I'm really excited about that. So Leslie, thank you for reaching out. Um, it's a great area, and uh, it's very exciting. I mean, Prince Edward County is is very um, up and coming. It's it's got uh, wineries, over forty five wineries, and um, breweries, microbreweries, yeah. cider. What do they call the cider houses? Uh, cider houses. Cider houses. Cider house rules. So, and now it's just opening up again, and they always have a good mix of people from all over who come to visit there. She's got a wonderful yarn shop right on the main street in, in, in the bigger town of Picton. Um, so if you happen to be coming this way, it's not that far off from where we are. Um, yeah. Drop on by and say hello to Leslie. Yes, Leslie and Tim. And Tim. Yeah. At Rose Haven. At Rose Haven, yeah. So that's what we'll be, be doing. Uh, lots Very of time. exciting. Lots of knitting. I'll have a whip uh, to show you in the next oh, episode. What's it? Oh, work in progress. Oh, shoot. What, yeah, you, will you have one? I don't know. You have a, a week to get it ready. I'm always just a working project on my own. <laughs> 
So anyway, everyone, have a fantastic week. Uh, if you have any questions, fire them off. Um, always love reading your feedback. It's, it's, it's always wonderful. And um, just hope everyone has a fantastic week. And did you want to say anything else? Yeah, I want to say the same. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this time with us. Do yeah. come again. Do come again. And if you haven't um, subscribed, hit the subscribe button if you like it. And um, we'll talk to you soon. So take care. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. See you next time.